There's no place like the cube. My name is Trayvell Anderson. I use they, them pronouns. I live in Los Angeles. I am family and I love it because especially as trans folks, we are the embodiment of the divine. And I love being able to show people how to get free. Because guess what? Everybody needs a little freedom in their lives. Family, happy Juneteenth. It's your favorite queer radio personality, Anna Deshawn, and that was Travail dropping our first Pride voicemail. Let me tell y'all, when I went to go check Speak Pipe, I didn't really think anybody had left one. And then Travail made my whole day. Thank you, my friend. Now it's your turn. If you're driving, go ahead and make a mental note. If you're at your computer, go ahead and make a calendar reminder so you don't forget to leave us a Pride voicemail. We've only got one more episode left in June, and I would love to hear why you love being queer, a comrade, or an ally. A link to leave us a voicemail is in the show notes, and I really hope to hear from you. Yeah, you. Yes, you. I want to hear from you. We'll be right back with our top queer news stories. But for now, hear about our latest podcast we drop in collaboration with Edit Audio and Dr. Money called Rebound Revolution. A link is in the show notes to subscribe. I'm saying you don't want to miss this one. What has 144 players, 12 teams, and one league that you should tap into? If you guessed the WNBA, you already know. If you didn't, we'll get you up to speed real quick. My name is Money, and this is Rebound Revolution, bringing you the revolutionary on and off the court happenings in the W. Join me and a special guest each week as we watch them work. Listen to Rebound Revolution wherever you get your podcast. Now for the news. Illinois becomes the first state in the country to pass a ban on banning books. Arizona's governor vetoes another piece of anti-trans legislation. Colorado Springs holds the first Pride Parade since the deadly mass shooting at Club Q. And Demi Lovato is back to she, her pronouns. And Kokomo City, a black trans film, is coming to theaters in July. Come on, family, let's go. You are now tuned in to higher frequencies. We do this frequently. Turn your radio station to E3 for that decency. Listen to great music and the latest movement. Safe listening for anyone that's tuned in. Who you waking up to? Anna Deshaun, Q Crew and Friends. It's that real talk. On live radio with the spins. You caught up in traffic, frustrated. Just check in with E3 to shift your vibrations and get elevated. That's queer radio done right. Choose to be yourself. That's the only way to live life. And that's how it's done here. We ain't worried about the other stations. Check. Family, our leading story for today is coming out of my state of Illinois. In a historic move, this past week, Governor Pritzker signed legislation that makes Illinois the first state in the whole country to ban banning books. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. You can't ban books in Illinois and expect to receive state funding. Come through, okay? Now hear what Governor Pritzker had to say. The argument for banning books always begins with the claim that it's about protecting the children. And yes, of course, we all want to protect our children, so they're reading age-appropriate material. But banning books from libraries isn't about that at all. Book bans are about censorship, marginalizing people, marginalizing ideas and facts. Regimes ban books, not democracies. We refuse to let a vitriolic strain of white nationalism coursing through our country determine whose histories are told, not in Illinois. Did he drop the mic? I think he dropped the mic. (laughs) I don't have to say anything else. Not in Illinois. This legislation is so significant because according to the American Library Association, In 2022, there were more than 1,200 book challenges, which is double the amount from the previous year. 
and more than the ALA has ever seen since it started keeping data 20 years ago. In Illinois, we had 67 book banning cases on record in 2022 alone. Well, under this new law, libraries that remove books from their shelves risk losing their funding, period. In addition, libraries and library systems must adopt the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights or a similar written statement that explicitly prohibits the practice of banning books or restricting access to materials. Now, by Illinois enacting this law, they are setting the example. And I constantly say, we have to be an example here in Chicago and the state of Illinois, how other states who affirm LGBTQ folks can act and how it looks when it comes to legislation. It looks like this. The new law takes effect on January 1st, 2024. And you know what? We live in a democracy and our politics should reflect that. This is that. Come on, Illinois. In political news, we got some good news today. Arizona's governor, Katie Hobbs, has vetoed another piece of anti-LGBTQ legislation that aims to restrict trans students' access to public school restrooms. The veto comes as part of a series of actions taken by the Democratic governor to protect LGBTQ plus youth. Yeah, yeah, family, this is happening in Arizona. And yes, they do have a Democratic governor. Mm-hmm. Now, this isn't her first veto either. Just last month, she vetoed a bill that would stop schools from using the names of pronouns preferred by trans students. Y'all, she is on a roll, okay? Now, let's be clear. Arizona is still very much so a purple state. And just this past week, a pride flag was maliciously burned outside a city hall building in Tempe, Arizona. The city has condemned the act of hate, and they reaffirmed their support for the queer community. The mayor actually said, we will not stand by while someone tries to threaten, bully, and intimidate members of our community. Well, it seems a couple of the most high-ranking politicians in Arizona are committed to creating a more inclusive communities for us, which I think is pretty freaking dope. Now, let's take a quick break and hear from a couple of our sponsors, okay? We'll be right back. We've got two, not one, but two pride shout outs this week. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yes, first, let me tell you about a new podcast called Together Real Bad. Together Real Bad is a queer relationship-based podcast encouraging you to communicate more freely and openly in your own relationships to reap the amazing benefits of uninhibited, healthy communication. Join Beautiful and Ace bi-weekly as they discuss how they nurture their growing relationship with intentional acts, questions, love, and service. Subscribe to Together Real Bad wherever you listen to your podcast and follow them on TikTok and Instagram at together.real.bad or check out their website at togetherrealbad.com. Our second pride shout out, boom, 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 boom. Today goes out to Keep It Savory Salt Company. Keep It Savory cures fresh ingredients sourced from growers and vendors on Chicago's west side to make insanely delicious salts that will elevate whatever dish you are making. This is a queer-owned and teacher-owned business. You can find Joanna Sling and Salt at various farmers markets this summer at select Chicago retailers or visit keepitsavory.com. Now get this, family. Keep It Savory has given you all a discount code, okay? So you can go purchase your own savory salts. You get 15% off with your purchase. The discount code is Proud and Salty. You got that? Proud and Salty. It's valid now through July 10th. They're wishing all of us a safe, joyful, and very savory Pride Month. Welcome back to the podcast, family. I really do hope you check out Together Real Bad and support Keep It Savory Salt Company. They support this pod, so we should support them back because we all we got. Now, in culture news, Colorado Springs celebrated pride this year bigger and better than ever before 
just seven months after the devastating mass shooting that took place at Club Q. I reported on Club Q back in November when the deadly mass shooting took place. Even in the midst of their ever-present pain and grief, they came together as a community and created the biggest pride ever. Gretchen Presley, the communications director of Pikes Peak Pride said, everyone in the queer community of Colorado Springs was impacted just by our proximity to this attack on our community. The Pride festivities began with a memorial ceremony featuring the mayor, victims' family members, and audio recordings from survivors. Attendees observed a moment of silence at precisely 11.56 a.m., marking the first emergency calls that were made on the night of the attack at 11.56 p.m. The parade was led by Fierro. Do y'all remember him? He's the heroic veteran who didn't consider himself a hero, but also owns a brewery. Do y'all remember him? He stopped the shooter. He led the parade. Now, this parade had over 15,000 people in attendance, making it literally the largest pride gathering in the city's history. As Liz Smith beautifully put it, quote, we have to make joy the reality. It sounds like y'all did that in Colorado Springs while still honoring the lives that were lost at Club Q. Well done. Well done, y'all. In entertainment news, Demi Lovato has switched up their pronouns so they can bring more joy back into their life. Demi commented in a recent interview with GQ, Hype Spain, that she's tired of having to explain they them pronouns to people, having to correct people all the time. She said, I constantly had to educate people and explain why I identified with those pronouns. It was absolutely exhausting. And this is one of the reasons that have led me to also feel comfortable with feminine pronouns. I just got tired. But for that very reason, I know that it's important to continue spreading the word. Huh. So, I have many thoughts. <laughs> On one hand, I get it. Having to explain who you are is exhausting. Believe me, I get it. But on the other hand, Demi has the privilege of just switching it up. So many don't. In some ways, Demi deciding to switch it up can just add fuel to the they-them pronoun debate. You know what I'm saying? And for real, for real, if she really identified with they-them pronouns in the first place, switching it up wouldn't even have been an option. I'd also like to say that some folks choose to use both. For example, she-they or he-they. I personally say my pronouns are anything respectful because that's exactly what I mean. I believe that's really at the heart of why we even ask people their pronouns, because we want to be respectful. Family, this is what I'm telling you. Do what feels right, not what's trending. Mm-hmm. Now, what is really trending right now is the trailer for Kokomo City. You heard me talk about this film back in our April 24th episode because one of the leading stars, Rashida Williams, who the world knew as Coco the Doll, a rising star in the entertainment industry, was murdered in Atlanta. Coco was an advocate for the trans community and reminded us that Black trans women can do anything and be whatever they wanted to be. In response to Coco the Doll's death, the creator and director of Kokomo City, D. Smith, said in an Instagram post, I created Kokomo City because I wanted to show the fun, humanized, natural side of Black trans women. I wanted to create images that didn't show the trauma or the statistics of murder of transgender lives. I wanted to create something fresh and inspiring. I did that. We did that. But here we are again. She did do that. And I think Coco the Doll is going to be so incredibly proud looking down on the entire cast, the crew, when this documentary hits the theaters, okay? Now, it had an incredible run at Sundance, so much so that Lena Way came on as an executive producer to help push the film into the mainstream canon. It's exciting. Now, just this past week, in exciting news, it was announced that the film is coming to theaters on July 28th. Not too often does a film go from Sundance to the big screen so fast. So family, mark your calendars and get your friends together so you can go support this art because we all we got. Take a listen to the trailer distributed by Magnolia Pictures. Most of the time, 
It's niggas that you would never know. They will walk up to you. Can I get your number? Looking around and shit, making sure nobody is watching. Before I got any work done, the client will walk out on me. You gotta have titties and body. They wanna see a pretty ass girl with a big dick. What we usually do as trannies, we be broken down, but we need to stand out. You gotta be the bitch with the biggest boobs, the biggest body. There's some guys that they just want to fuck you. Yeah. They don't want to touch the dick. They don't want to see the dick. They don't want to be reminded that you were once born male. A lot of us are secrets to many powerful people. She's not aware of the fact that her black successful husband is upstairs in their beautiful condo down in Tribeca, laid up with a black trans woman. But in no way are they there to protect us. Niggas can't accept being with a trans woman in public because it's their ego and they gonna feel the world is gonna belittle them for what they like. Yeah. Violence doesn't happen before the orgasm, it happens after. I ran across this girl online and I was like, damn, she bad. Oh, she's transgender. And I was like, how? I was like, she, she likes Beyonce fine. When we was growing up, we was always taught you can't, you can't be like this, that. you can't be that way. It's just... not accepted in gang life at all. You better be a tough gay nigga, cause they gonna tease you nigga. You can't be soft gay gay. In this game, you know, that's where either you get out of it or you end up dead, you end up hot. This is survival work. This is risky shit. I want people to understand that it's okay just being something that you was born to be. It's guy after guy who's in denial. A black man should be this way, and a black woman should be that way. Kiss my ass. Today's word is a quote from Mother Audre Lorde that says, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. I don't know about y'all, but I'm pulled in so many directions this month. I am literally sitting in my friend's spare room recording this episode right now because it's Father's Day. And it's also a day we remember someone we lost. Speaking engagements, okay, requests, work, <sighs> y'all. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful. And it's also exhausting. And I'm sharing this word today as a reminder to myself that choosing me is okay. I hope you know that choosing you is okay, too. Okay? Now, y'all take good care of yourselves, and I'll promise to do the same. Till next week, family. Peace. If you enjoyed what you hear, rate and review us inside your favorite podcasting app. This podcast is a production of E3 Radio, your number one queer radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news in high rotation.